tired as a boy. Say so Heron Kingpin, Nicky Barnes, Pistol Pete. Came up in the game in the projects of the Bronx amidst the 1980s crack epidemic. He earned his name Pistol Pete after starting his own gang, Sex, Money, Murder. Their drugs kept the hood from starving, but their violence caused pain and horror. Sex, Money, Murder rules supreme and has become a part of gangland history. If they hadn't been indicted, they probably would have been as powerful as a drug cartel. Their leader, Pistol Pete, was ruthless and deadly. He got the attention of rap superstars like Nas and Peter Guns who rhyme about his life and crimes. He went clubbing with supermodel Tyra Banks and music mogul P. Diddy. He had an aura of flamboyance other guys didn't possess, but his dark side was always ready to commit homicides. Normally bosses delegate hits to others to carry out, but Pete was passionate and thrilled to carry out murders himself. He bragged about catching bodies. He was strategic and calculating, as well as aware of gangster history and read books about the Italian mafia. He idolized crime families. As a child, he had pictures of mobsters along his wall, as others had pictures of music stars. He had mob boss Albert Anastasia on his wall and other high profile mob figures. Pete wasn't only a fan, he actually studied crime syndicates. He examined the early mafia leaders and anytime he tried to learn a lesson so he wouldn't make the same mistake. Pistol Pete wasn't planning on ending up like Anastasia shot dead in a chair in a barber shop. After reading about that, when he went to get a haircut, he have a mob of enforcers with him. At the barber shop, he made sure the door was locked and he had hitters on standby. Later on in his career, he was never alone. He always had armed killers with him. In his teens and into his early 20s, Pistol Pete established a reputation as a ruthless killer who accumulated millions in the drug game in the late 80s and early 90s. He was known as one of the most feared and powerful men in New York during the crack era. He could get people whacked off word alone. His influence and organization stretched out to the city's five boroughs, reaching out and touching states all across the eastern seaboard. Pistol Pete was one of Soundview's original gangsters. Setting the bar high for his hood in the Northeast Bronx. In the city and all down the coast, Pistol Pete was known for murdering with no conscience. He was quick to pull and quicker to shoot. His motto was, it's not about his salary, it's about reality. That's why they call him Pistol Pete. He was like a gunslinger from the Wild West movies, a modern day Billy the Kid. Many of the murders Pistol Pete was allegedly involved in was ordered from his prison cell. Even after being locked up, he still controlled his organization, Sex Money Murder, from his jail cell. As they wreak havoc on the streets of the Bronx and beyond, Pistol Pete's prison nightmare began in late 1995 when he was arrested at Grand's tomb in Harlem for the murder of Carlton Hines. Pete and Carlton Hines, a local basketball star who had a scholarship to Syracuse allegedly had some beef. On the street, it was known that Carlton Hines had one foot in the dope game while trying to make a name in the other game, basketball. Pistol Pete called Carlton outside a car stereo shop off Boston Road and bodied him. And shot him by the name of Carlos on April 8th of 1994. A couple of months later, Pistol Pete caught Carlos coming out of a hip hop store known as the Jew Man in the Bronx and killed him because he was a witness to the murder of Carlton Hines. At the time Pete was arrested for the murder, he was carrying a gun when he was apprehended and required to do an eight month mandatory sentence while awaiting the murder charge. Authorities say while Pistol Pete was incarcerated at Rikers Island, he became a member of the Bloods gang. During his eight month bid, the pistol was inducted into the gang, but his initiation into the Blood Street gang 
was in the ordinary jump in. Pistol Pete was so high profile and held in such high regard on the island amongst killers and predators that the Bloods gave him his own set. The reason he immediately rose to power with the Blood Gang is due to him becoming a beast in Rikers Island. The Bloods on Rikers wanted to bring him in, but he said the only way he would join is if they gave him his own set. Which is how Sex Money Murder was brought into the Blood fold. Pistol Pete became a Blood in 1996. Pete wasn't a follower, he was a leader. He didn't want to join them, but when he did, he turned the whole neighborhood red. During his incarceration, he was also making moves and keeping his ear to the street. He had an empire to run. Under the pretense of trying to get money for his lawyer, in early 1996, while David Gonzalez was still dealing with Hershey McNeil, Gonzalez spoke on the phone with Pistol Pete. Gonzalez owed McNeil money for some fronted coat. But Pistol Pete wanted the money Gonzalez owed, and he wanted more. During the telephone conversation, Pistol Pete let Gonzalez know that the source of the cocaine Gonzalez was moving was in fact Pistol Pete's father's friend, George Wallace, who Pete called his uncle. Pete explained that his uncle gave Hershey coat to sell so he could pay for his attorney. Pistol Pete then went on to explain that the kilo and a half of crack that McNeil fronted to Gonzalez actually belonged to him. And Pistol Pete wanted his money. The whole North Carolina deal had left a sour taste in Pete's mouth, so he decided to shake Gonzalez down. Gonzalez was shook and agreed to pay McNeil the money he owed and to loan Pete additional money to pay for his lawyer. Pete ended up getting about 20 grand from Gonzalez, but Pete extorted and shaking down Gonzalez would later come back to haunt him. Once the eight month mandatory sentence for the gun was up, Pete's mother bailed him out, but he was only free. Little did he know for two weeks. He went here at first with his commitment to the blood organization. Pete was banging bloods hard. He had the whole neighborhood in red. All his brothers were in red. They wore red Converse, red everything. He turned his entire area into Blood's territory. It was like a wave when it happened. Bloods were everywhere. And once a gang takes over a certain section, you either in or out. And that's what Pistol Pete was preaching. You was either with them or against them. No in between. During the 1990s, the violence was so out of control and authorities had a difficult time getting their handle on it. They couldn't find any witnesses. Sex Money Murder just got stronger and stronger. Overnight, Sex Money Murder went from a street gang to a syndicate. They were getting increasingly sophisticated. Laundering drug money and investing it in legitimate businesses. Paying out members with clean paychecks and leasing all the cars so they couldn't be traced back. Pistol P has so much influence on the blood gang affair spilling into the streets from prison. When Pistol Pete went back to court for the murder case, which he beat due to no witnesses, he was remanded into custody due to a federal narcotics indictment out of North Carolina. And with cooperation from some of Pete's old associates, mainly David Gonzalez, whom he extorted for the coat to pay his lawyer, they had enough to indict Pete for the drugs, money, and guns that they later on uncovered in a seized vehicle. But Pistol Pete took his lick all in stride, just like the gangster he was. A true player will accept the hand that he is dealt simply because he did not live a lie. The Pistol said in truer words were never spoken. Pistol Pete was sentenced to life plus 105 years in prison. He's held in solitary confinement out of fear he'll use his influence with the bloods to order violence or murders. He is currently serving out his time in the ADX facility.